Hey, whoa, front screen froze. Hello, Internet. Um, I purchased this thing about four or five months ago, and I don't think I've made any videos on it because I was unsure if I loved it or not. I basically, long story short, I've always loved 911s. I've always wanted a GT car, and um, yeah, this last year was really good for me as far as just everything, a lot from the whole cinema stuff that I started getting involved with more so last year, but yeah, I figured it was time to scratch that itch and push the button and just get a GT car before, well, at the time they were expensive, but now they're even more expensive, so whatever. Uh, this is a 2018 GT3 manual, so a 991.2 car. It is in the standard white with buckets, carbon ceramics. Basically everything's flat, black, interior is carbon. Um, six-speed manual transmission, little fire extinguisher over there, you know, yellow seat belts, standard GT3 stuff. Uh, I haven't really done anything to it yet. Um, the only thing stuff, the only stuff I have done is, uh, well, let me just open the door up real quick and show you. I mildly tinted it with like 50% just because I didn't want it to be overtly tint tinted because I do intend on putting a roll cage in the car and I do like to see at night and I think dark tint on cars looks bad even that car has got 35 percent on it over there and uh sometimes i think it looks a little too dark but for that car i don't mind and uh, i also had the tail lights tinted and the rear bumper ppf because the whole car is paint protection filmed but the rear bumper was not because i think they were scared to take off the lettering back here back in the day when this car was originally ppf in 2018 i guess because that's when the car was made um, and that was when it was purchased so anyways tail lights are tinted just ever so slightly. I'm always going for like OEM plus look. I'm not really going for anything super aggressive and I think it looks really good on the car. It looks darker in the video than it does in real life. And uh, yeah, I've bought some stuff. All of it will get here tomorrow, but I think I'm gonna just start tearing the car down tonight just because why not? Um, oh, it does have an axle lift as well. I didn't mention that. Uh, I bought this, which is a numeric shifter. And I bought the cables, and these are some sound dampening little rubber nuggets that go over the cables. I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming you just slip this and slip it over the cable. But anyways, it will change the shifting characteristics of this car, which I honestly don't have that big of a problem with. But I've felt a 911R that had shifter cables, uh, or I actually just had the shifter, didn't even have the cables, and I was like overtly impressed with it. So... I'll show you the stock before I end up start tearing stuff down. So stock shifter, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse. When it's in gear, it's got a little bit of play. I mean, that's in gear right now. First, second, Third. So anyway, so the entire shifting mechanism right here will be replaced and then there's two cables that run back to the transmission That'll also be changing. Uh, I also have intake um, Just better air filters a tune and uh, Akrapovic or Akrapovic, whatever however you say it uh, Full titanium header back exhaust. So titanium headers high flow cats titanium mid pipe I did get the one with a big uh, space gizzard on the side which is like a muffler so it's not like straight through I didn't want the car to be over overly loud um, but I did want it to be a little bit more aggressive and then the uh, center section is basically what it is right now um, which is a center bypass delete currently the car has a Sharkworks center delete on it which I think looks pretty good but uh, I think it's just too loud for what it is. It doesn't add any performance and it's just overtly loud. And it has the stock little bypass or, or the stock side pipes on here. So these are like side mufflers. And 
Yeah, the cars, when the valves are open, it's really, really loud. And when the valves are closed, which is on diesel, like under 4,000 RPM, anything not full throttle, I just don't like the transition between um, the valve versus unvalved. Even when you have the valves open, it's still slightly quiet and then it gets really loud. And I'm just looking for something a little bit more, um, I don't know, something a little bit more like raw. And uh, I think I'm going to get that with a titanium exhaust and also save a lot of weight because these exhausts are fairly heavy on these cars. They're not the titanium like the RS. So uh, titanium center section on the RS car. The non-RS car has a stainless steel center section, but like I said, this one's already been changed. So I have it over there, or it's in that back room over there, but whatever. So right now I'm gonna take out the center console. All right, so uh, I didn't film any of this because I was so frustrated. It's literally been like six hours. Um, it's putting the shifter in the car and uh, here's where I'm at. It took me almost two and a half, three hours, maybe a couple days of thinking to get the center console out. Now I have these new shifter cables in here, which were a pain in the ass. Not even sure if it's gonna fit because this little bulge right here. Okay, it's a few hours later. I think it's like midnight or something. I finally have the shifter in and the center console pretty much back together. This is pretty sick. Check it out. It is like pretty sick. I don't know if you can really tell, but yeah, it feels feels nice. When I have it all back together, I'll do another comparison. The short, the throws are shorter, and yeah, I don't know if the cables were worth it, cause that was a real pain in the ass. But hey, you know, when in Rome, you gotta just do it all, I guess. All right, I'm gonna put this shit back together. Okay, here's the uh, next day. So it's, I spent all day yesterday putting in these shifters cables and the shifter, everything's back together. I'll talk you through exactly how much of a pain in the butt this was to get all out, but before I'll show you the shifter. So neutral, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse, very little play and it just feels like when people say it feels like a bolt action rifle i don't think those people have ever actually used a nice bolt action rifle because this feels like a nice bolt action rifle the stock shifter does not feel like a bolt action rifle at all i know people compare the cayman transmission to a bolt action rifle but similar transmission setup in this car and it did not the Lotus felt better than this, honestly, but it wasn't bad. It was just, it could have been better, I think. So anyways, now it's good. Let me show you the order of operations to get this center console out because I know that I had a struggle with it and it was a huge daunting task for me. Uh, so first of all, you lift the shifter from the front. So you get a little pry tool. You lift this, that pulls back and then this actually slides out like that. There's two little hooks right here. If you try to pry it from the back, you will break the hooks. So pull from the front and then the shift boot, you just kind of pull it up so that you can get to the access right here underneath the shift knob. There's a little twisty clamp. You twist the clamp, the shift knob pulls off. Once that's off, this whole bezel is gone. Um, next for me, I pulled these side trim pieces off. So you just kind of start back here and you pull, 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 and then this actually just slides out on both sides. So this comes like that, and then it slides out at that angle. Um, there's a little hole right here that there's like a dowel that goes in there. So just make sure when you, you pull the bottom pins and then kind of tilt the thing up and pull this way. Uh, then the next piece is this trim bezel piece right here, this carbon. 
which I was I could not get off. It wouldn't come off. But once you have this corner piece off, you should be able to get like a pry tool. You always want I have never used interior trim tools before, but I did on this because it was just impossible any other way. Um, but yeah, you stick a piece of nylon in there, like a nylon tool, and you start prying, and it just pops up all around here. You can pry it from the back. Then this trim piece, this bezel around here comes off. Then you're left with about six or eight bolts that hold this like plastic piece on. Um, and then you undo those eight bolts. Then you have to undo the head unit. You pull the head unit out and then this is clipped in. You pull this piece right here up and then you unconnect the, the wires and then slip the uh, head unit back in. And then um, if you wanna take the full shifter housing out, which is what you need to do to get to everything. Next, you just pull the shifter itself. You undo the cables. They're pretty self-explanatory. They twist and then the cable comes out and then uh, you're left with four bolts. These are all like Torx 20 and 25, I think, or 25 and 30, I think. Um, and then the shifter actual mechanism comes out. You're left with the two cables in there. Um, and then you have to remove this entire center shifter bezel like this piece this whole thing comes out um, and how you do that is there are four i think they're torx 30s there's two here and two up here deep in the bottom and then there's also two here but this blew my mind i could not figure out how to get this off i ended up taking these eight bolts out removing the top of this using a punch taking this lid off you don't need to do that all you do is you take a pry tool and you pry up the back of this rubber right here, you can't pry up any of the front. You pry up the back of this rubber, the back corner, so that it flips like this. And then you just kind of pull up on it. And this like charging pad comes out as one piece. And then there's two connections on the bottom. You undo those. And then there's two Torx 30s here. And then once you undo that, this whole center console kind of frees up. There's a couple plugs. I think there's like five plugs that go, that run back to this charging port. And also there's one here for the uh, cigarette lighter. And then you have one plug for this and one plug for this. And you undo all those plugs. Then this whole center piece comes out. It's kind of a bitch to dake out. You like kind of maneuver it back up into the windshield area and then out the side. It's kind of hard to do with buckets, but I was able to do it. Anyways, that was the most nerve wracking thing ever. Once you get that out, then obviously it's just all reverse putting it back in. But um, the shifter cables, you kind of undo these two little Velcro straps right here. They are literal Velcro. I don't know why I did that. Um, you also have to remove these when you take this side piece out right here. And these are a slide forward. There's two bolts in here. One that actually holds this, and then there's another right here. Um, and yeah, you kind of slide that forward and then this piece disconnects and like this whole center piece comes out um but yeah it was a uh, it was a pain in the butt and uh anyways there's a grommet in there so you pull the whole shifter cables out and uh this is what the shifter cables look like and yeah they have like a grommet that's right here it's a little rubber guy that you know isolates the outside of the car from the inside of the car and you cut that there's a numeric tutorial on how to do all that and then how to do the shifter uh assembly like how to it, it's not a very good video i'm not gonna lie uh, i had especially on the interior they should have done a better job and i honestly should have filmed the interior part but it took me so damn long it took me like 12 hours to do this install and it's just because it, I didn't know how to work on this car. So I'm like having to figure it out as I go. And there's not a lot of help online showing you how. And obviously it's really expensive if you break stuff. So I'm like, you know, spending a lot of time trying not to break things because interior pieces are extremely easy to break. Uh, I'll hop under the car real quick and show you the, uh, the underneath just so you have an idea of what you're looking at. Under here... So under here, you have a couple panels that you can see up there. There's one kind of plasticky panel that's here, and there's a metal panel that goes right here. You can see them right there. And then, uh, yeah, once you have access to this, which is your, like, tray on, this light's too hot. 
once you have access to this, uh, this is your trans, your shifter mechanism right here. And then these cables run up and then the grommet is up there. You can see it going into the, into the car. So anyways, you feed the cables through the bottom, which uh, I did it from the top. It's a pain in the butt. The grommet actually clips in from the bottom, which doesn't really make sense, but that's how it works. It clips from the bottom, I guess, so that the seal is better. Cause if it clipped from the top, I don't think the seal would be as good. And then I did, uh, I pulled these, these mechanisms right here that hold, it's really like a mount that holds the, uh, this, this thing. I pulled that and then shaved off these little nipples. There's these little nipples that hold the stock cables. You got to do that on top and bottom because these don't have the little nipple. So you got to literally just grind it off. And then I also use their, uh, that this stuff is supposed to go on the inside of the car to keep down on noise. But I figured it could use the insulation on the outside right here because it does rub up against a bunch of stuff like this trans mount right here. Uh, and it does touch the body. So, you know, the engine moves. I didn't want anything. These cables are really hard. I didn't want the cables to, you know, be hard and wear on like the body or this trans mount. So I just put this little piece of insulation. All I did was slit down the side with a razor blade and then kind of slip it over all the way up to the grommet, which was a pain in the butt. And then I zip tied it with some like, uh, uh, what do you call them? Like car automotive grade zip ties with the steel bite piece. So yeah, I don't know, it was a pain in the butt. And then adjusting it was obviously a pain in the ass as well. And what I did to adjust it is I just lengthened the trans side as much as I felt comfortable on the uh, actual uh, forward and back, like, you know, first, second, third, there's like the cross gate. And then you have forward and back, which is actually the, the shifter itself. So you lengthen the shifter side pretty long. Like, I don't know, I think I've got four or five threads left on the threads on the rear. And then the front, you want to just put the shifter in, get it perpendicular to the ground. And, uh, you know, that's what I did anyways. And then I just lengthened everything I needed to and clipped the little ball joints on. And uh, it was perfect. Put it all back together. Good to go. Uh, oh, yeah. You also need to get in there and there is one screw so you like pull this little rubber piece up there's a little rubber that little thing with ribs on it that thing comes out and then there's a cap and there's one 13 millimeter bolt in there that holds this whole carpet in everything else is just velcro so you just pull the velcro on the sides and then that whole piece comes out it's kind of a pain in the butt to get out but yeah you got to remove that too i think I'm pretty sure you have to remove that. Yeah, yeah, I think you do because there's the hinges and stuff are under here for this and it won't come out without it. So, yeah, man, pain in the butt. Now it's done and I'm gonna put on the exhaust and that's gonna be requiring me to pull the rear bumper and uh, all this stuff is gonna go on. So this is a, that was a numeric shifter and cables. This is a, a Kropovich. Full titanium, full titanium exhaust. So headers, high flow cats, uh, side pipes with, this is like the side bypass area. It's got its own little titanium muffler situation with V-band and some really dope valves that'll hopefully, you know, kind of retain some of that stock function where you can turn the car from quiet to loud with the valve button in the car. Um, and then the rear center bypass and then also the tips which are in that box which are very expensive i didn't i didn't order the tips originally because i thought it came with them it does not so if you're ordering this exhaust and you want tips you got to order them separately and let's just open these up because i need to take a look at them again because why not let go yeah these are pretty cool full titaniums so yeah anyways let's get to it i gotta pull the bumper and start digging in i hope this is i think this is going to be a lot easier of an install than yesterday yesterday was all that interior stuff was like a nightmare so
All right, so it's been 25 minutes. Bumper, all the heat shielding and stuff is all off. Bumper, rear diffuser, heat shields, crash bar. Here are the stock side mufflers. Stock valves are here. Got a GMG center section, which I didn't really like on the car. And uh, I'm about to take it all apart and put these new headers and stuff on and also put the new air boxes in. So, or not air box, the new filters in. So that'll be hopefully quick work. It seems like it's going well. I don't want to jinx myself with some wood. So the last time I left you, we were, had all this stuff off. Now I have all that off. The back of the air filters, the fans. I was going to try to fix this. This is kind of a little wonky, but I might just leave it. We'll see. I was trying to smooth it out. But yeah, air box. Going to replace these stock filters. About to pull the headers off. And then I'll start installing everything. Everything is ready to go. Might clean up some you know, little dirty spots here and there, but dude, this is, uh, this is working a lot better than yesterday for sure. The shifter was a pain in the butt, mainly the cables themselves. The actual shifter part wouldn't have been that bad, but the cables themselves were a pain in the butt. So stock header, stock cat. Again, I'm going like full titanium with a high flow cat. And then I have a tune for it as well. So yeah, I got to thank Nick. Nick Ward at Taxi Garage for hooking me up and helping me with this stuff. I just got off the phone with him. We we FaceTime all the time, but he just we were just FaceTiming, talking about these like reusable little clamps are not reusable. The one-time use clamps here. He's always super helpful. If you need any car stuff and you want to order it, hit up Taxi Garage or Nick Ward. Nick Jeezy, he's a drifter also. He's got an S14 with an LS in it, and it's like crazy power. Anyways, I'm going to get back to working, pull these headers, and put the new air box or new air filters in. All right, so I just pulled the headers off. I'm fully disassembled now. I just got to start putting stuff back together. So here's the stock headers. Here are the Akrapovich headers. It's not really that big of a difference as far as weight. Obviously, these are still catted too. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. If, what if, from what it feels like, it may be like a pound and a half, two pounds difference. Fit Like what it feels like, I don't know. And they're not that much different. These are apparently titanium as well. These are stainless and then you have a high flow cat in there versus this uh, this this standard whatever whatever cat comes in these very a lot of screenage going on in there so yeah i'm going to slap these on I mean, they're pretty heavy i mean pretty light sorry <laughs> pretty light i got to clean these uh Clean these little gaskets that came off here, but yeah, no headers, my guy. Straight block. I should turn it on now and just die.
All right, it's like an hour later or something. I've got the headers on and uh, I'm putting on the muffler situation at the moment. Almost done. Just got to button it all up, get it semi tight, start it, start it, go drive it around, make sure everything's good. Come back, put the bumper on and it's good to go. So yeah, leaving everything loose right now to get it all fitted up and then I'll tighten it back down. All right, it's like 10 o'clock or something. Ran into some delays. There was a this little bracket piece right here. See this piece? That was gone because of the center section that I had. It, so there's this bolt right here that holds this whole bracket on. And to get that bolt in or out to put this bracket on, you have to actually drop the subframe so i had to like jack the car up all weird and drop the subframe slightly so that i could get that bolt out because there's a like a this is in the way so it won't come out so anyways that's in there now and uh it's all held together how it should be held together it's on the air filters are in all i gotta do is load the tune the shifter's in we're like ready to go Currently just cleaning up. Uh, I'm gonna, I am gonna heat cycle it and just drive it around like this for, a, for probably tomorrow because it's ridiculous. It looks so intense. Alexa, stop. All right, we're done. going to clean up around the shop and I'm excited. Ooh, that's chilly.
want to I want to get this freaking like twisted. How do I twist this thing? You might have to, uh, you might have to twist that the actual suction cup now. Like you might have to pull okay. it off. Okay, all right, all right, I can. Do it. Give me that thing! It's like a... Sell me that! A British racing green. Yeah, I like it. It's cool. 